Welcome back to the Ohio Expo Center in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Sean Woodland with Bill Grundler, the fourth and final heat for Jackie. And it is a who's who of CrossFit athletes. The event record is five minutes, four seconds. 1,000 meter row, 50 thrusters, and 30 pull ups. If that thing's going to be beating the record, these guys can certainly do it. You know, Jason Kalipa has a record coming into this overall. I, I want to see what Rich is going to do. I, I mean, he's the champ. I want to, you know, everyone's looking, everyone wants to know. Let's send it down to Rory McCurden with more on this event. Hey, hey, thanks, guys. You know this last heat is going to be crazy fast. Assume unbroken pull-ups. Assume fast and unbroken thrusters. It's all going to come down to the row machine. These guys aren't just gunning for a good time in the event. They want the event record set by Khalifa, and that means they'll have to haul ass here. Don't fool yourself. A short, fast row does not necessarily mean they're going faster. Look for the athletes who have a long, strong, efficient pull. That's where you're going to see success. Guys, Bill, you were number 10 in SoCal on this workout. How'd you do it? You know, I pretty much knew that I was gunning for Jason Kalipa and all the other big boys out there, but you're right. They got to go hard on the road, but they can't kill themselves on the road. They need, these guys need to be shooting for about a 320 on that 1,000. And then you're right. It is all about unbroken, no missing uh, of any reps, and hammering those pull-ups. The athletes are on the floor. Let's send it down to PA announcer Travis Bajan for the intro. Right, Central East, currently in 12th place from the Open, in lane 12, from Top Fuel CrossFit, Chris Shimley. In 11th place, from CrossFit 317, in lane one, Kirk Pachu. And currently in 10th place, from CrossFit Maximus, in lane 11, Chris Walker. Ninth place after the Open, from Mad City CrossFit, in lane two, Nick Forey. Eighth place from the Open, from CrossFit Cadre, in lane 10, 2011 Games athlete, Joe Weigel. In seventh place after the Open, CrossFit 614, lane three, Dave Ulmer. Sixth place after the Open, your 2010 CrossFit Games champion, Lane 9, Graham Holmberg. Fifth place after the Open, CrossFit 061, also a Games veteran. In Lane 4, Nick Urenkar. In fourth place after the Open, he was sixth in 2011 and 2012. In Lane 8, Dan Bailey. In lane five, from CrossFit Polaris, third place after the Open, seventh in 2012, Marcus Hendren. Second place, CrossFit Distinction, fourth place at the 2012 Games, lane seven, Scott Pancic. And in lane six, your 2011-2012 CrossFit Games champion, from CrossFit Mayhem, Rich Froning. Your starting grid. Keep an eye on lanes five through nine. Those men all finished in the top 10 at the 2012 Reebok CrossFit Games, and they're all battling for a return trip to Carson. There's your two-time defending champion, Rich Froning. Not only trying to win this event, but also chase down the event record set by Jason Kalipa at the Northern California Regional at 504. You know, Rich did this event two years ago at the UFC Expo down in Houston. 532 was his time. Everyone that's been doing this this time around has been cutting off about 30 seconds or so. So I think Jason's record might be a little shaky there. The time to beat, Dre Strong. Pardon me, it is Gerald Sasser. Five minutes, 17 seconds. Dre Strong had the previous best time at 5.26. The event record, 
five minutes, four seconds. Jason Kaliba owns that. But that man, Rich Froney Jr., looking to chase that down. When you look at Chris Walker, he loves to row and look at his form. Doesn't have the bandana, he's got the, the blue knee sleeves on right there. Long, long stroke. That's going to serve him well in this particular uh, segment of Jackie. You have to get through this row smooth, consistent, and quickly. That right there is going to get the best marking on that computer, and that little computer box is telling you when you get to stop. And Chris Walker, one of the tallest athletes in the competition, six foot five, 220. A lot of range of motion there for him, but that can certainly help him out on the rower. Marcus Hendren, he's in lane five. Hendren was one of the unknowns last year, wound up getting into the games. He finished seventh. He's 5'10", 198 pounds out of CrossFit Polaris. I'll tell you what, a farmer, he's an, well, a farmer that actually told his dad, guess what, Pa, I gotta go and do this competition thing. So he's actually, this is the first time he's been able to do this, to actually physically train for the regionals and for the game. It's gonna be really interesting to see how that year of training has been able to help him out. Rich Froney occupies lane six. On the left of your screen, another man who made a name for himself last season, Scott Panchik. He finished fourth at the games. And Panchik really came onto the scene when the Open started and proved that he was not a one-hit wonder. Uh, absolutely, but I want you to see, look at the difference in the rowing techniques here. Look how smooth and consistent Rich is. He's not blowing himself out a lot longer strokes, whereas Scott's is short and choppy. Not a very efficient stroke at all, and I'll tell you what, that could hurt him when he gets to the thrusters. You need to have the gas for the thrusters and the pull-ups, especially when you're sitting side-by-side side with a champ like that. You cannot blow efficiency, not at this point. Past the two-minute mark, the time to meet 517, 2010 CrossFit Games champion, Graham Holmberg. The only guy to ever take Rich down. The only man from the twin that's ever had the... Had the, the uh, just the absolute studliness to do so. Um, you know, he's always kind of just kind of sitting on the fringe, but I think he, and, he, and what, he, what he said earlier is that I want to take Rich down. He's like, if you don't think you're not going to take him down, you shouldn't be here. And he wants to take him down. Yeah. Rich Froning has essentially won every competition that he has entered since winning in 2011. His pace, about 1 minutes 40 seconds, and he has about 150 meters left as all these judges' hands now are in the air signifying that their athletes have just 250 meters or less left on that initial 1,000-meter row. We approach the three-minute mark in the fourth and final heat here of the opening event for the men. It's Jackie. They have six more events after this over the next three days. Again, these guys are going to, uh, they want to come off around 320 if they want to get a decent time you know, again, making sure that the thrusters and the pulls are going to be good, but they have to have a 330 is going to be too slow for these guys if they're chasing Jason. And here they go, everybody off the road at the same time. Dan Bailey wow. on the thrusters. Patching is there as is Froning. Marcus Hendrick, Graham Holberg, all the athletes done with the row. And it's Dan Bailey right now, about a one rep lead over Rich Froning in the middle of your screen. Now, this right here where Dan Bailey is going to have a shot because he's a shorter athlete compared to some of the other ones out there, shorter range of motion. And that may help him in this particular segment, the 50 reps. The longer you are, the taller you are, it's going to hurt you. It's more difficult you have to travel. But wow, these guys are going rep for rep with each other. Joe Weigel in lane 10 is also working his way into the top three now. As Rich Froning is in the third spot as this lady leak. He's bouncing back and forth. But it's Dan Bailey and Joe Weigel now rep for rep for the lead. It's going to come down to the pull-ups, just like we've said before. How much and who's going to be able to stay on that bar? You know all these guys are going to stay on the bar, but it's going to be who's going to be, who's going to have the shortest, the quickest, tightest butterfly pull-up. But you're not going to see strict ones or kicking in this segment. Yeah, the time to beat belongs to Gerald Sasser for probably about another 30 seconds. As these men are all on pace to beat that, the event record is 5.04. Jason Kalima holds that. And Dan! Timers on their ankles, but that was way 
close to call. And now Chris Walker finishing up, Kurt Boxu in lane one, Chris Shibley. But what a finish. You can tell that these guys all knew exactly what it was going to take to finish first. They, they had to do it. They had to do that. You know, if it wasn't for that electronic timing, we would not be able to tell the difference between 509.2 or 509.4. It was just a, a rush of studly athletes coming to the finish there. So it was Joseph Weigel unofficially two tenths of a second faster than Dan Bailey and four tenths of a second faster than Graham Holmberg. Insane. That was that was insane right there. There was a tie for third between Homer and Scott Panchik. They both finished at 509.6. And then Rich Brody, you saw signing his scorecard, finished at 509.8. Your top three, Weigel, Bailey, and then Panchik and Homer, both at 509.6. Rich Froning on the thrusters as every athlete got off the rower at about the same time was able to keep a pretty good pace here. You know what? The thing about Rich is it's not about winning every event. It's about staying consistent to be in the top three in every event. That's what he's done at the games over the past couple years. But wow, Joe did an unbelievable job through that. He hammered the thrusters and was just relentless on the pull-ups. Let's go down to Emily Turner, who is with Joe Weigel. That was really fun to watch. I imagine it was awfully fun to win. What was going through your mind in those last seconds, looking to the side? Uh, I saw. I heard him say Dan was right there. We were about wrapping up on the pull-ups. As soon as I got out of the bar, I just wanted to beat him to the mat. I kind of looked over as I was going there, just like I just gotta get there, get there first. And I just tried to get as fast as I could. Your legs don't really move very well after that. I imagine not. Now, I imagine one of the things that played into this is the fact you were a 2011 Games competitor, didn't make it last year. Yeah. How has that hunger affected you going into oh, 2013? I want it bad. I mean, I want to get there. I want to win. I want to win everything, you know. I'm not just doing this for fun, and I got something to prove this year, and I'm, I'm going for it. And last question, you were the one person we saw with gloves on. Yeah. Why would you wear gloves, and did they help you? Yeah, it's a long weekend, you know, a lot of reps on the hands. It's not worth ripping them on the first event. And yeah, I got good grip with them. Felt fine, so I like them. Well, fantastic finish for you. Good luck with the rest of the weekend. Sean, Bill, back to you. Thanks, Emily. And if this heat is any indication of what we have in store for us this weekend, it is going to be a lot of fun. Joseph Weigel, 509.2. Not really the guy we thought would be putting up the best time. You know, look at Rich is sitting down there in fifth place. Ah, this is going to be an interesting weekend. Long events to go still, but it's going to be an interesting weekend. So Weigel with the win. Dan Bailey is in second. And Graham Holmberg and Scott Panchik tie for third. Your overall standings after one event. Joe Weigel followed by Bailey, Holmberg, and Scott Panchik, the defending champion. Rich Froning sits in fifth place. But we still have six events to go. And Rich Froning starting off the defense of his back-to-back -back CrossFit Games championships. And he's going to have a host of competitors to hold off. More coverage from the Central East Regional in Columbus, Ohio, coming up.